Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Nuns. Today we're studying James chapter 1. Let's get started. The book of James is such a good reminder to me of what a treasure we have, what a gift we have in God's Word. So the book of James, I'm about to blow your mind a little bit. James, the writer of James, was actually named Jacob. But when King James had the Bible translated, he wanted to see his own name throughout the Bible in different places. And so he's like, Jacob, why don't we just call him James? And so today as we read through, I'm going to say James Jacob because we all know him as James. Um, but as the half-brother of Jesus, he was called Jacob. His name was Jacob. Um, and so James studied Jesus' words and Jesus' teachings. And he also studied Proverbs a bunch. And so together, we get this book that is full of practical information on how we can live in this world and what it means to follow Christ. We're going to run through it real quick, and then, as always, we'll get to our takeaways, which I could have tons of takeaways. Chapter 1 is the intro chapter to this book, and it kind of outlines and sums up the main ideas that we're going to see all throughout the rest of the chapter. He talks about things like, how trials can actually be a good thing. He talks about how God is the one who gives us wisdom. All we have to do is ask. He talks about poverty or being poor is something that we should rejoice in, which reminds me of the Sermon of the Mount about the Beatitudes that Jesus taught about the upside down kingdom. And we're going to see lots of gospel um, messages, things that remind us of, you know, things we read in the gospels as we read through this because James Jacob read through that um, in studying. He talks about watching what we say and taming our tongue. He talks about God being the giver of our gifts and of all things, including everything that we need to follow Christ. And so today we just kind of get a little hint about what this small book is full of. This book is short and quick. It's just uh, four chapters long but it's full of really good, important information. My takeaway today, we both kind of have the same takeaway today. It comes from the last half of this chapter when he talks about being doers of the word and not being hearers only. When I read this, I can't help but think about James Jacob. Um, he actually, as the half-brother of Jesus, he was not a follower of Christ. He was not one of Christ's disciples while Jesus was living on the earth. But after Jesus' death and burial and resurrection, Jacob decided he believed. So I kind of picture him um, after Christ's death, after the death of his brother, going back and reviewing every single thing that Jesus said. I think this is something that would be normal for all of us to do when we lose a loved one, to go back and we value more what they said. We value the time that we had with them, and maybe he's rethinking everything and going through everything that Jesus said with a fine-tooth comb, especially now that he believes that his own brother was the Messiah. And that's how I would be. I would regret not paying attention to him while he was with me and present, and I would want to learn everything that I could um, that I may have ignored before when he was with me. And it kind of makes me want to tear up like he didn't understand what a treasure and what a gift he had while he was here on earth, which is understandable. I wouldn't fault him for that. I think it would be difficult for one of my boys to believe that one of the other ones was the Messiah, you know. And so I kind of understand that. When James Jacob says to not take the words of the Bible lightly, Maybe that's what he did before Jesus died. And so now I kind of wonder if he clings to the word of his brother, of his savior, as if it were a treasure. James Jacob knows how valuable and important Jesus's words are. And so he says, don't just read them and forget about them, but read them and let them affect your actions. Let the words of God sink into your heart penetrate your heart, and affect the way you live. And so, I think we all benefit from James or Jacob's digging and reading, and this result is this really good book. And so today, that's where our, our um, takeaway comes from. This book is a gift, 
And so as we read it, let's not just read it and, and walk away and be like, I don't even remember what I read, but let's read it to have an impact on our lives. Let's let it change our hearts. Um, today's challenge, let's not make those same mistakes that Jacob did while Jesus was alive. Let's take his advice and treasure God's word and let it affect our actions and the way that we live. And then bonus points to those who memorize James chapter 1, verse 22. If you are participating in Bible drill this year, the blue cycle, this is actually one of our Bible verses. And so John's going to recite it for us. And our, we just give you a challenge to, to memorize this, not just to memorize it for no reason, but it's part of God's word. To memorize it and to put it into action as we read God's word. John, what is James 1.22? James 1.22 is, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That's right. So James is going to be full of instruction, of calling us out. The Lord is going to use this word to convict us. I know just from the topics we read in this chapter. Uh, but let's, let's put into practice not just reading his word and walking away and checking it off of our to-do list. Let's put this into practice where we read the word and we let it impact our lives and change how we act. All right, friends, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.